Uh, now I'd like to recognize Ranking Member Blackburn for her uh, opening remarks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am absolutely delighted that we are having this hearing today and focusing on scams and fraud. Now, in Tennessee, I say we've got the good, bad, and ugly relationship with AI. A lot of our manufacturers, people that are working in healthcare, predictive diagnoses, disease analysis, um, logistics, they are utilizing AI every day to achieve efficiencies. Our songwriters and our entertainers are saying, hey, wait a minute, we got to have some help with this. And you referenced the Copied Act, uh, the No Fakes Act that um, some of my colleagues and I have done on a bipartisan basis. And then the ugly is really what is happening to people with these scams and with these frauds, and especially when it comes to senior citizens and what we are seeing happen there. Now, I thought it was very interesting that the FTC, with the Consumer Sentinel Network Data Book, they listed that scams increased a billion dollars over the last 12 months to $10 billion. This is what it's costing. And from a year prior, it was up a billion dollars. When you think about the rise in this, you have to look at what this is doing. And of course, we know AI is what is driving a lot of this. It is a technology that is advancing so incredibly fast. And of course, legislation never keeps pace with technology. So we know that it is catching a lot of people that are really quite savvy when it comes to conducting a lot of their transactional life online. And we know that older Americans are the ones who have been hit most frequently with this as an emerging threat. Um, threat. Now, the fraudsters that are utilizing AI to deceive consumers are, have gotten crafty when it comes to creating these highly personalized and convincing attacks. And I think what is surprising to a lot of people is the fact that they are doing this at scale and the replication of these attacks. And the tailored emails, the text messages, the images, as the chairman showed, the altered images. And those are used to trick people to click that link. And then once they have clicked that link, they are then downloading malware. They're divulging personal information. And the fraudsters feel like that they've got them. But they've become, these attacks have become very realistic. Uh, the spear phishing emails that really use a lot of this make it appear that it's coming from a trusted source. And the adding to this the chat box, which make it appear that you are having a, an actual real-time conversation with someone is very disarming. So... Um, we know that these are becoming, the use of these tools by the scammers are becoming more prevalent, they're becoming more precise, more widespread, and harder to attack. And when we get to what do you do about this and how do you combat this, we know that it does require an encompassing uh, approach. It's got to be comprehensive. And of course, consumers need to be armed with knowledge about what is happening here and also looking to improve their digital hygiene and their digital literacy so that they know more about what they need to look for with those red flags. And um, we know that it is also going to require that we move forward with having an actual online privacy standard, 
which we've never passed. And this committee, and when I was in the House, we continued to look at this so that individuals have the ability to actually protect their virtual you, which is their presence in the virtual space. And it is going to require that we take those actions. We're, we're really thrilled to have you all before us today. It helps to inform not only our committee, our subcommittee, informs our colleagues and bills into the record for the need to move forward on legislation that will enhance the privacy and help to protect our citizens in the virtual space. So welcome to each of you. We look forward to hearing your, your statements. 